my dearly beloved, it's always a pleasure for me to come your way with the surest word um, that is streaming on YouTube and also on Facebook, then also on WhatsApp um, by script. And so I come your way today with another surest word. My name is Patrick M. Hagen, and I'm the creator of the surest word uh, platform. And the surest word is aimed at empowering people, uh, both with the word of God and also with the things of the world, uh, so that the people who belong to the family of God will know what happens in the world. And so um, uh, today we want to share another word with you. Uh, before I do that, I need you to also know that on Facebook, uh, you can be part of the family uh, that is making waves. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have people who are joining the Facebook group, uh, the surest word, uh, from Indonesia, from Qatar, from Pakistan, Vietnam, uh, from Bangladesh. Uh, we have people who are joining from Ethiopia, Nigeria, and Ghana uh, happens to be the main base, and people who are from the USA, and also from the UK, Italy, and also from Switzerland, and indeed from all over the world. It's so amazing. And so we want you to also uh, be part of the family. Uh, I also have books that are on Amazon. On Amazon, you can have my book by typing my name, Patrick M. Hagen, and all my five books uh, on Amazon will come for you. But you can also search with the titles of the book. And you can have You Are Who You Are, um, Overcoming the Seven Basic Fears in Life, uh, The Anatomy of Courtship. Uh, then you can also have Breaking the Father's Codes. That you can have the cry of an African mother. And so today uh, we want to continue with what we were doing uh, with the topic fighting the African lions and bears and we are looking at black inferiority and so more or less it is looking at black inferiority uh, part two. We are using the same scriptures and I'll go straight uh, to the scriptures that um, I used last week. As a matter of fact these are the scriptures that we're going to be using throughout the sequel. And so our first scripture is from 1 Samuel 17 and 36. And I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. And I also have put in some insertion. And so it says that your servant killed or fought both the lion and the bird. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he hath defied the armies of the living God. The second scripture is from 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. It's also from Amplified. And it says that, Let no one despise or think less of you. That is, make you feel inferior because of your youth. And I have put that because you are black. But be an example or a pattern for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. My dearly beloved, as I mentioned, it is another week and I'm more than happy to come your way with this broadcast that is aimed at empowering you to be able to serve God and the world better. And so last week uh, we began by talking about black inferiority uh, in connection with the main topic and it was established that God never created us and I mean blacks or people of color um, to look down on ourselves. Uh, this week I want to shift the focus to why most people of color see themselves as inferior to other people of different descent. Now, to start with, you must appreciate that before colonialism came to Africa, Africa had its own problems. Before the white man came, we were not treating ourselves well. So, it is sad to state that a people created in the image and likeness of God would bring themselves so low to other people created in the same God who are in the same image and in the same likeness. God created us and God specifically gave his image and likeness to us. It didn't matter the pigmentation of the, the person. And so before the white man came, we had a sense that says that the human value is nothing. It's nothing that we have to respect. And this attitude of ours made the white man to 
to have dominion over us in the first place. Uh, the white man came to Africa to meet a people who knew their identity very well and were resolved to safeguard that identity at all costs. I dare say that the white man wouldn't have had authority to colonize us in the first place. But sadly enough, you know, even in today's world, many people of black descent think that the black man hasn't achieved anything in life. Such people, my dear ones, cannot be blamed that much because they may lack the wherewithal to do research into matters such as this. But unfortunately, even those of us who are endowed with the requisite knowledge uh, most often even condone and we connive with these same white people to bury our story. For example, I'm sure that many of the people who are listening to me may not know that the word New Testament was coined by a man called Tertullian who came from Carthage in Egypt. This man was a brilliant lawyer who argued with the intelligentsia of his time to bring the gospel to them. The same man coined the word sacrament that is being used in most churches across the globe. Now, as you continue reading or watching uh, the videos on this topic, um, on this platform, um, several of the African story in relation to achievements would be showcased uh, for you to know that many Africans have achieved. However, let's turn our attention to the main issue of why black inferiority is a problem uh, for most Africans. Now, to begin with, the story of the world as traced from the biblical point of view confirms that all human beings emanated from Adam and Eve. Now, if you know, uh, the word Adam is from a Greek word that is Adama. Adama, uh, when translated, is the soil of the earth. So, Adam or Adama is basically the soil of the earth. This goes to confirm that God gave that name for him, Adam, to know that he came from the earth. It is just like uh, uh, me. My name is Patrick M. Hagen. So when I give birth, the same names that I give to my children will be Hagen. It is for them to know that they came from a Hagen stock. And so if all people are traceable to Adam, then why the differences in skin pigmentation? Somebody may ask that question. And several reasons linking gene mutation and geographical locations as people move to settle in different climatic regions in the world uh, could be adduced to this. But however, it didn't fundamentally alter the source of our being that God created us with. But because the depraved nature of man had come to stay with us, we started exhibiting traits that are alien to the original plan. Now, in view of this, you would realize that when even the Jews, considered to be the most favored of all people on earth by God, were struggling to possess the promised land, and Moses had sent spies to scout the land, over 83% of the people who returned came with a bad report reinforcing how inferior they looked before the giants in the land. In that episode, it took Caleb and Joshua to stand up to reinforce their superior nature before they could go ahead to possess the land. And so Africans per se are the first people to wallow in this syndrome of inferiority. Even in today's world, certain regional blocks of people are still struggling with this as we are also battling with it. The question still is, why is this so? Now, if the Jewish example is anything for us to follow, then one would be wrong to state that slavery is a major contributor. The fact is that when people are badly molested by another person, to the extent where they lose their sense of worth, they sometimes automatically condition their minds that they don't match up to the standards of their abusers. However, the African problem even predates colonization. We were not treating ourselves well before the European scheme, as I have already said. And so when they saw that we had no sense of worth for one another, they took advantage of it. As I speak to you 
or make this video uh, I'm currently um, working with some Asians and sometimes if you look at how they disrespect the laws of Ghana with impunity and sometimes with some connivance with some of the blacks then you ask yourself why are we doing this thing to ourselves so the question still is why do most Africans look down on themselves now in attempting to answer this question I will rely heavily on historical antecedents both from secular literature point of view and the Bible now historically most Africans migrated from Babylon which is current Iraq in those days Babylon was noted for idol worship and slavery the only difference in the type of slavery that they practiced was that their slaves were not in shackles like what Europe and America did to Africa their slaves uh, were used to work on their farms and they did the domestic I mean no jobs and so as some of these slaves ran away uh, from their masters or had their freedom and moved away from home to form their own settlements other people from other empires joined to constitute what is now known as the African continent the other historical uh, fact about Africa uh, is that um, when Abraham had reached a certain age, old age, uh, he married Keturah and gave uh, birth to, with Keturah. He had six children with Keturah. Uh, you can have uh, you know, this story from Genesis 25, 1 to 4. Now, these signs multiplied to constitute what we call the Cushites. And that is the African race mentioned in Genesis 10, 6 to 4, uh, to, to 10, of which Ham, the son of Noah, is the progenitor. In this same historical fact, there is a man named Nimrod, uh, who is also mentioned and is cited as being the builder of Babel. So when you read um, Genesis 11, Nimrod's name is mentioned that he built Babel, which is Babylon. Now, the interesting thing, however, is that Nimrod was described as a mighty man. And to the best of my knowledge, any mighty person knows exactly who he is. So how the descendants of the mighty man became feeble and considered themselves inferior is what we are interrogating. So why do we see ourselves as inferior compared to other people? I will list the reasons and expound on them next week. So, number one, wrong indoctrination about white supremacy. Number one. Number two, the acceptance of a pseudo-identity.